سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا اله الا الله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر والله اكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Al Hikmah TV. My name is Naima Khan Ghani, and I'll be your host for today's segment of Who's Who in America and the Community. This program brings to you individuals who have dedicated and committed their lives to serving Allah. They come from a wide cross section of the community, which involves the local, national, and international levels. We hope that their story will serve as an inspiration for you to get involved in your community. My guest today is Dr. Aisha Subhani, who works at the Broward General Medical Center. Welcome to the program, Dr. Aisha. Thank you very much, Dr. It certainly is a pleasure to have you today. Give us, um, I know a lot of our girls, especially out there in the community, have a big question in terms of how they can balance being a Muslim and getting involved in the medical profession. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of um, advice in terms of how, what inspired you to become a doctor, mm -hmm. what, you know, how you overcame some of these challenges? Well, um, my mother herself, as you know, she's a physician. So mm -hmm. I was exposed at an early age to the, the lifestyles of a, of a doctor. So it did interest me. Um, I wasn't certain, though, until I was in undergraduate school at the University of Miami. That's when I decided that, yes, that's the path that I would like to go on. So I kind of committed myself. Because for anyone uh, who's going to go into it, it is sort of a, a mental commitment right, and it's preparation. It's a huge commitment, exactly. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. kind of have to prepare yourself mentally. So once I did that, um, and I kind of started to focus on the studies and everything. Um, then I really thought to myself, I said, gee, you know, it's a lot of years of, uh, of just studying and preparation, and is mm -hmm. it really what I wanted to do? And um, so I did a little bit of introspection, and then after uh, seeing, you know, the difficulties my mother faced, but also the, the joys and, and, and the benefits of it as well, the people that she's helped, and, um, and the fact that she found it to be a challenging yet very fulfilling profession, I decided to go forward with it. But alhamdulillah, it worked out. I went to um, Nova Southeastern as the medical school, so I was mm -hmm. able to stay close to home, which was an advantage. I had some family support. And, and that's um, an important uh, factor I think so. in this. I think so. I, don't, I think whether you're a, a woman or a man, having family support around yeah. you, good friends, good community is important. And it kind of gets you through all the difficult times. So I had that, alhamdulillah. You know, there was um, no doubt there. And, um, and that's it. I mean, I just spent the, the first phase, obviously, is just a lot of studies. So you have to focus, manage your time. Um, there definitely is the time to do it. I think uh, a lot of people have a misconception that once you go into medical school, that's it, you're going to be absorbed and your life is over and you're never going to be seen right, again. You don't have and life after you that. Know, you right? close your door, <laughs> throw away the key and you have to study. But actually, it's all about time management, um, I found. Mm -hmm. That if you just pr you know, prepare yourself well, manage your time, put a certain significant amount of time for your studies, but also for your family and for other, uh, and any other community activity that you feel is important to you as a person, whatever it is, hobbies, you can do so. And then I also realized um, as I went further in the, in the educational process is that as a physician, you're not uh, destined to have to work all the time. You choose your schedule as you, fee you see fit. So how much you work is an entirely um, your de decision as an individual. So it's there's a lot of flexibility correct. in terms of you yes. trying to determine how many so hours you, can you be, want to put so in So you can be week. a neurosurgeon who's right. on call mm -hmm. every day of their mm -hmm. life and not be seen except in the hospital. <laughs> or you can be a physician that um, you know, works uh, regular hours, takes call here and there, and uh, has definitely has a life or family and those things. And so I decided that, you know, um, medicine is an important part, but not the only part of, uh, right. of my life. And that's a key factor in something Absolutely. that our viewers yeah. need to understand. Just having, you have to maintain balance. And Create that's the balance. essence of our religion, mm -hmm. really, because the Prophet ﷺ has always taught us that you need to have a balanced approach to everything, whether it's religion, if familial engagements and things like that. Right. So Take same the thing with path, work. exactly. Correct. Don't go from one extreme to the next. Correct. So then Beautiful. I chose emergency medicine mm -hmm. um, uh, only because it, um, it has a sort of a diverse exposure to different uh, fields. In other words, you don't see the same thing all the time, right? So it's, it's, it's quite... So uh, learning all the time, growing yeah, and developing. Exactly. It's, very, it's, it's challenging <laughs> at the same time. But then also I, I, I work where I wor have my schedule. So it's like I work 10 days during the month. When I do mm -hmm. work, it's 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 a it's a challenging thing. It's it's a commitment, but um, I don't have to call them. I'm home 20 days of the month with my family. I That's have children, great. so it works out well. And I think women forget that there are so many areas in medicine 
where you can choose from that you you can enjoy and be fulfilled, but it doesn't have to consume your entire life. Well, and I'm glad you, you mentioned know. that because they normally think, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. Well, there goes my life, and I'm going to be consumed yeah. with this and literally consumed yeah. because they don't think that they can fit anything else into their life. So I'm glad that you're bringing this fact, you know, these factors Correct. out, so that our young people out there, especially our young girls who are thinking of the medical profession, can start preparing themselves now. Because you mentioned mental preparation and time management. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so I'm glad and that's that the and that's the mm -hmm. essence of it is really just managing your time and and on the contrary I would argue that I actually think it's more important for women to be in the field than even men now only because I think in the mm -hmm. in the modern day it's it's so much dawa just for us to be out there in that and exposing ourselves and showing ourselves that we that we can be actually exemplary doctors or clinicians or whatever field yeah. that you go into and that you're able to kind of you get that because there's this misconception that oh you know they're you know Muslim women maybe they're not going to be able to go into this field or they can't they're they're not going to be uh, they're not going to have the aptitude or the means to do these things, and we do have that, um, and we actually can do re we can do really well because some of the best physicians out there are Muslim women, you know. So, um, and you'll be surprised to see how many uh, non-Muslims are actually very happy when they see um, uh, Muslims in that profession, especially women, and they would prefer them. So I'm, you know, so we I see it, and I think it's a it's a it's a good thing, and it's a good thing to actually for the young people to actually realize that it is an option for them. It's not something right. that they can ju they have they can just say oh no, as long as they enjoy it. Exactly, and, uh, something that they yeah. want, you know, they must want to do. That they have do. a desire to do, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, talking to you, just, you know, this idea just popped into my head. Is there any such thing as a support group for our young women out there, our young Muslim women who are thinking of the profession, mm -hmm. you know, where people like you, for example, you've experienced it, you've been through the whole process, and you can go out there and educate them in terms of what they need to do to prepare if they're thinking of this profession and some of the challenges and how they can overcome this because, you know, we don't want to get into the consumption aspect. But, you know, sort of educate them out there if they're thinking, the young yeah, doctors, I mean, potential. I don't know if there's, there isn't a formal organization that offers a support group, but we've had, I mean, myself and other uh, um, women who are in mm -hmm. the same field have made ourselves available. I mean, we've spoken at some halakas and uh, sort of like MSA type uh, right. programming at okay. the medical school and everything, just to kind of advise them. And my advice really in general has always been is that it, is this is something that you should really want with your heart. It shouldn't be something that you're being forced into by a family or anybody else. Or, or being just passed on from into generation to yeah, generation. Yeah, I mean, you right. really have to have a passion for it. In your case, it's it. in your generation, yeah. but then it's also your desire as well. Yeah, because I decided, right. I said, I'm not just going to do it because my someone in my family is doing right. it, like my mother. I, I want to do it because I have a passion for it. And as long as you have that, because you really have your, your intention behind it is that you really mm -hmm. want to help and you want to excel in this in this field, then that's fine. And there's a, always a way to find to that you don't you don't have to let it uh, take, uh, take over, your, over life, your entire yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. And your doctor, your sorry, your husband is also a physician. Correct. correct? He's a physician. Yes. And how do you juggle that? Uh, is he the well, same flexibility? He, he uh, has mode flexibility. He works a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but uh, there is flexibility there. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I mean, it's his choice on how much he wants to work. And so it's uh, it's really what you want to do. You know. Um, right. You know, and how much uh, how much time you want to take for your family and everything, and uh, and take time to enjoy. So, so once you've been through the whole process, you know the educational aspect of it. Then ultimately, the rest depends on you. Correct. You determine. Okay, do I want to give half of my life, half of my time? Yes. You know, what what aspect or how much do I want to dedicate? And then you can um, yes. juggle accordingly. I think the fear always lies yeah. is when they have when they realize that they're going to have to take so many exams, and there's the residency that's very difficult. Right. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, and once you get through that phase you know you have a you then you, you have a, all of this the you benefits have, exactly, you can reap it after exactly but yeah. it's 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 a tedious process that they must be willing to correct. commit to correct to get to that to correct. be able to enjoy what you're enjoying now correct your and, and not just medicine i think there's a lot of yeah. other really important fields that are tedious i mean they require a lot of effort exactly. and, and everything but okay. the fruits are there you know at the so, end yeah. and you're doing a lot of work mashallah i know you've you've probably volunteer a lot out there in the community both you mm -hmm. and your husband so we commend you for that Mashallah. Oh, that really brings well. me to the next question. How, I know you're involved in a lot of um, Islamic activities out there in the community. Mm -hmm. Would you like to mention some of the organizations that you're affiliated with and that you are committed to? Um, well, sure. Basically, uh, locally we, had a, or we have an organization called Medina Foundation, mm -hmm. which has really kind of stemmed from uh, our experiences as a group with the larger organization, which is Dean Intensive Foundation. 
and that's a, a sort of like a North American initiative that's been committed to educational programming for youth mm -hmm. and young adults, really primarily, although we have people coming from all ages. And those programs really are focused on uh, bringing back the, the essence of traditional Islam, you know, uh, teaching them about the, 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 the basic tenets of the faith and then how to apply it in, in, in modern times, right? So they're kind of reaching that balance between uh, your career and your family life and incorporating those principles just so that you can live as a sort of a holistic Muslim, you know? And so we've been uh, working on that. And some of the programs, there's like a summer program known mm -hmm. as the Rahla program, which is quite popular, where every summer we go for approximately three weeks to um, a location, usually in the Muslim world, uh, but not always. So, mm -hmm. we've, so we've been to like we've been to Hamdala, we've been to Medina for a few years. Uh, last year we were in Turkey. This year we're returning to Istanbul, oh, and so it's like a it's like an immersion type mm -hmm, of program. Mm -hmm. So students come from all over. We have about 150, 175 students, and there's classes and site visits and study groups and study circles. So it's an intimate gathering. But the idea behind that is for students to kind of return home with sort of that spiritual rejuvenation, mm -hmm. but basic knowledge as well, and then they can apply it into whatever fields they're 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 going to be going into. So how do they? How would someone get involved if they're interested in something like this? It's is very it simple. Open? It's very open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very it's very open. And, and in fact, uh, a lot of communities uh, are hosting weekend programs, which are sort of minuscule samples of mm -hmm. what the rahla is like, right? So we've had a couple of programs down here with, uh, and uh, you had some young scholars as our guests. And, uh, and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is the one who actually started the entire project, right? It was sort of a, a spin-off from the Zaytuna Institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started the whole endeavor uh, with the idea that he felt that a lot of uh, Muslims in America just kind of needed that, uh, not just spiritual rejuvenation, but just understanding of the basic elements of the religion mm -hmm. because there was some confusion sometimes or misinterpretations or questions that the youth had that weren't really necessarily being answered. So just to kind of fill that void. And um, so the communities here locally and in other communities in North America have been doing programs there. So that's young people can definitely get involved. There's no, as long as you're interested right. and you know, you have And I know the attraction for our young people would be traveling to different uh, countries, you know, globally. So um, what, you know, spiked the decision that instead of just keeping it internal that you would expand it out there on a global level? Well, I think, uh, although there's amazing places in North America, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, oh, in Canada and the US, there's a lot of amazing <laughs> places, but I think also it's important for mm -hmm. us to see um, some of the, the, the traditions and uh, I would say the exemplars of in the Muslim world. So you have like extraordinary cities, whether it's Fez, which where the Rahla has been before, mm -hmm. or Istanbul and these places that have so much of a historical perspective and so much for us to kind of gain in terms of history and, and understanding and to see that culture there and get rooted there and to kind of get away from, the idea is to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle and everyday life and the internet and the phone and the text messaging and everything else right. and just kind of study. So we felt that it kind of adds that exotic sort of element that a lot of youth would uh, would like. And it's attractive know. too, you know, to, Absolutely. to kind of get yeah. the, the so younger it gives generation them, it's up It's kind there. of broadened mm -hmm. their horizons a bit that there is, you know, you know we've had a, a global impact uh, and in terms of our religion and it's right. there whether it's here or it's abroad. But, uh, but the, key print, the key point is, is that um, when you return home, wherever that may be, mm -hmm. whether it's in the United Kingdom or in the U.S. or it's in Trinidad mm -hmm. or anywhere <laughs> else, right? That, yeah. you know, the, there's a basic element of humanity and understanding that you need to take home with you, right? And you need to apply that to no matter what you're doing, whether you're a student or you're a, um, working at, you know, you're a housewife yeah. mm -hmm. or you're a professional mm -hmm. or any of those things. All of those things are important. But um, that kind of adab and the manners that you learn and that spirituality, you need to let that infuse. You know, so they internalize that Absolutely. as they go back yeah. and, and that's pass what, it on. And that's what yeah. makes us human beings, right? So That's interesting. You know, so I think, you know, if we come back, we can talk a little bit more about that because I think it sounds very attractive for our young people mm -hmm. now because they're faced with so many challenges in yeah. today's society. They need to have different avenues to explore. But at this point, we're going to be taking a short break. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Tune in to Who's Who in America and in your community. Hosted by Sister Naima Khan Ghani with extraordinary guests every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com. Tune in for Friday Khutbah at 1.30 p.m. Broadcasting live from Darul Uloom Institute, Pembroke Pines, Florida, on Al Hikma TV Online.
جشن آمد رسول اللہ اللہ Tuning to Young Muslim Talent in America Hosted by Salma Muhammad With talented kids from all over America Every Saturday night at 8.30pm on www.alhikmatlive.com Allah, Allah Oh, Jashn Aamad Rasool Allah, Allah Thinking of doing Sadaqa Jaria for your near and dear ones? We recommend you to sponsor The Origin of True Islam brochure the genealogy of prophets, or the surahs and zikr to be recited daily as Sadiqa Jaria for your parents who have passed away. Or you could sponsor one of the items for yourself, Fisa Bilillah. For more details, contact the Al-Hikmat office at 1-800-804-0267 or 954-986-0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Welcome back to Al Hikma TV. My guest today, if you are now joining us, is Dr. Aisha Subhani. We were talking about the Mini Medina Foundation, sorry, and she was enlightening us about some of the activities that she is currently involved in. Uh, Aisha, tell us a little bit about what motivated you as an individual to get involved in Islamic activities? Because I know our young people are there, it's very challenging for mm -hmm. them now. And they have, they, they come with more excuses than you can think of of why they cannot get involved. Right. In studies, education is, you know, the number one reason. So what motivated you as an individual to get involved in Islamic work? Because I know you've been doing that at a young age. Yeah, yeah. I mean, alhamdulillah, you know, I think uh, uh, your environment has a lot to mm -hmm. play with it. So it would be wrong for me not to do that. I mean, my parents, uh, thankfully, alhamdulillah, have been involved with the community. So that influence is there, right? Um, so I, I saw that firsthand. But yeah. I would say that um, more so when I was in uh, college, in my mm -hmm. MSA, we got involved with uh, the activities with the Muslim Students Association. And that was in the midst of my studies. And I realized in planning some of the events and doing some of the activities, that there is a need for someone to, to have that in, as a part of their life. At least it was for me to have an element where it's not just always just the studies that I'm going in them studying and right. you know and then just fam you know family or or being with the friends and everything and hanging out quote unquote right. There was an element of of, of some kind of service that mm -hmm. I wanted to do, and uh, and there was an instant connection. We had organized a few lecture programs like during Islamic Awareness Week, and it was exciting. We got to meet a lot of people. We were working together as a group, so that. That brought a lot of uh, sort of uh, positive uh, influences for me personally, and and helped me grow as a as not just as a as a Muslim, but really as a human being. Just kind of understanding and meeting different people. Yeah. So, I realized that that was something that I didn't want to let go of. And alhamdulillah, I haven't haven't um, had a, a point in my life where you know I had to let go of it. You know, so far it's been it's there and it's been consistent and getting stronger. Right, and I think know. what it yeah. I think the the key is the balance part, which we had talked about before, right. is because I've seen also people get kind of burned out where they're just so overwhelmed. And you know, working in, in any community, whether it's a Muslim community or another, mm -hmm. there's, there, there's challenges, challenges with it, you know? Course, and yes. you, sometimes you can get jaded, and mm -hmm. there's cynicism and everything. So you just have to have that balance where you realize that you know, your intention really is to serve God and to serve His people and to, <clears throat> you know, to, to, to do positive work. And as long as you're doing that, you stay focused on that, there's always gonna be those challenges and other issues, but you have to work around it, right? And so, then I realized that it's an important part. I mean, it's something that even for my own children, I, I said that I'd want them to kind of experience that, that this, this is not a selfish existence. We want to do things to help people. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their niche, whether it's um, working with uh, the underserved community, whether it's uh, teaching or education, mm -hmm. um, working with orphans. I mean, there's so many projects. So for anyone to say that they don't know what to do, well, you have to find it because it's there for you, screaming, right. you know, you screaming for help. You need for to it find it. There, yeah. yeah, and everyone, I really believe that everyone has a specific talent, whatever it may be, public speaking, writing, graphic mm -hmm. design, videography, yes. right? Whatever <laughs> it is, right? They, they can do it yeah. and they can do it to help. And that, that little bit takes people such a long way, right? So, um, and then they enjoy doing what they, you know, Correct, as well. and I think if you look at the early community, right, mm -hmm. if you look at the early community of the Prophet Sallam, I mean, they all had their little niche, they all had their place, and I think that for all of us, um, just as a, as a humanity, as a human nation, we all have our place, and we have to right. find that, and, and I felt that if you don't have that element, I said it really leaves a huge void, at least it, it, I saw how I felt for myself. So that's why I decided that, you know, we should kind of continue on. And I knew what my strengths and my weaknesses mm -hmm. were as a person, where I think I can do really well and where I'm, you know, I'm not, not the best person for it. So 
So that's, alhamdulillah, that's where it kind of led me to, to this point today. And uh, whatever I can do, I'll try. So, so you tapped into your strength as, as an individual. Correct. And the things that you think that you can correct. pursue and grow and develop at the same time and become a better individual yeah. on the whole. Not yeah. just a Muslim, because that's what we are. And you know, as a Muslim, you're an individual. And you have to be and honest with yourself. Because yeah. you know yourself better than anybody <laughs> else. You know what, you can, right. what you're good at and what you're not, uh, what you're not talented at. But th the main thing is your intention is that you really want to be there to help. And even if it's just to, to vacuum the, the mosque at the end of, of Isha you know, every night, that's a huge, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a huge thing. So it's not so it's not really measured in, in you know. No, I don't think so. The, what it is, the actual, but it's how much effort yeah. and how much time and dedication. Because you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of unnamed thing. faces out there that do a lot of work. That's true. And uh, mm -hmm. they're the you know they're they're really the people that are driving everything. So I think that whether it's whether it's working and organizing a program or whether it's uh, um, doing other activities or helping the mosque or uh, helping uh, you know uh, relief organizations um, whatever it may be education MSAs you know volunteering these type of things it's you know you have so to find search it. for it they you have to find, to find it, it but yeah. they got to search absolutely yeah. and i think that's that's what's going to help you grow as a person and it's very fulfilling and i think without it i think people really do have a void and they they'll always feel like they're not satisfied I that's feel, true you know. i tend to agree with you you know you really need to find that one special thing, because we all have something. Correct. Some of us are blessed to have more than one. But you know, we all have at least that one thing that we can perfect, you know, we can excel no, in. Absolutely. So find it and, and just go with it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So mashallah. Yeah. So what other um, organizations are you involved with? Um, I'm affiliated also, uh, we support Zaytuna College. Uh -huh. um, and they were actually here uh, in the end of February. Um, right now they're going through kind of an exciting phase because they're purchasing a property in, in the uh, in Berkeley, University of California at Berkeley. Oh, great. And uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're basically uh, trying to develop a field. It's basically a, a, a college of uh, um, Islamic tradition, but it's like theology. So it's, a, it's in the mm -hmm. Theologic Union, and it has, um, it's going to have classes not only in, the, um, in terms of philosophy and sociology and political science or our secular sciences, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll also have things on the Islamic tradition and kind of um, intertwining them both. So students kind of get a very holistic uh, education. So they're rooted on um, uh, the sciences from our tradition, but also from the Western tradition. And then the, the amazing thing is that I think that what they'll discover is the two are very close and related, and a lot of them build upon each other. And especially the Western um, sciences have been built a lot of, on based on a lot of the Islamic traditions and philosophers of the past. So it's it's very exciting. So they they were been fundraising for that, and um, I think it's an important project for Muslims in America and actually really internationally as well, just to have that established here. It'll be the first accredited Muslim college, and uh, I think it's something for our young Muslims to uh, mm -hmm. really be uh, inspired and to be proud of once it's developed. So so what are some of the uh, challenges that you have experienced and seen in society in terms of um, educating Muslims? Because you talk about finding your niche. What is your niche? <laughs> <laughs> what well, did you find when you were in that search? What, well, what did I, you, you know, it's interesting because <laughs> in, in, in 1998, I, I attended a, a Dean Intensive Retreat, right? That was mm -hmm. my first exposure to it. And I thought, wow, this is amazing because it's, uh, it kind of gave me a, not just a boost, but kind of asked, it, it kind of reminded me to refocus on my, edu my own education in terms of my religion and why I am what I am mm -hmm. and what, am I purpose, what is my purpose in life and what I'm supposed to be doing. So I felt, you know, for me, I felt, okay, you know, I think I can organize these and I can help manage them. You know, that's something that, I'm, that I think I can reasonably do well. So right. we, did, we did a couple in, 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 uh, in South Florida, mm -hmm. locally, with a, with a group of uh, really great young uh, Muslims in the community. And, uh, and then we've been doing them in other communities and then internationally, as I mentioned earlier. So that's where I felt my niche so far. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's where I've been. And I think in terms of challenges, you know, it's, it's funny because there's, cha I mean, any, I think any kind of volunteer work you go into, there's always going to be challenges. There's personalities <laughs> and everything. I mean, you know, you, you have, um, you have uh, a sort of, uh, sometimes there's a uh, misconception, I think, that if it's volunteer work, it doesn't have to be professional, mm -hmm. which I find very difficult because actually you should be more professional, you know, so than, than anybody else. So you have to have a, a, a high standard. So not, never be like, you know, just kind of this lackadaisical attitude, like, medi you know, you don't want to be happy with just mediocrity. You really want to try to do the best possible excel, job. Exactly. No and matter what it is your, you do, yeah, excel. And set your standards high. And I think yeah. that in our community, for a long time, sometimes there's this passivity. Yeah. And you're trying to, like, fight that. You know, like, no, you know, we, you want to do best. Because, I mean, our tradition is based on excellence. And that's moral excellence and mm -hmm. excellence in any, everything that you do, right? Like, the Prophet said, do things with itqan. With itqan is, like, high, high excellence, high level of work. 
So you really want to have our youth to really say, look, you're not, don't be satisfied with just that. You did something great. Mediocre, that's yeah, right. go to the next that, level, yeah. and no matter what it is, whether mm -hmm. it's in parenting and your profession, and then obviously more importantly, you think in your work, what you're doing with the community and the Muslim community and your, and your, and your own self and ethics and things like that. So I think that's to me was the the, the biggest challenge. I mean, there's always going to be differences in personalities. You have to work around that, mm -hmm. um, interpersonal relationships. Um, you know, but to me, it's just that sort of that that passivity that bothered me initially, and just kind of motivating people to kind of you know take it a step further. So, so if you've taken your passion and your skill of organizing and bringing things together no. in terms of education, I think is is priority for you. Correct. And you've moved from one organization to the next, but they all seem to be linked with each other. Yes. Yes. Is there are there any other activities that you're currently involved in? Um. To be honest with you, there's um, the other thing that I'm focusing on, and, and it sort of stems off of education, mm -hmm. is, um, is children's education, because now I have three of my own, and, and then I, just like any other parent, you kind of worry, well, gee, in this age of like where everything is like automated and computerized, right. you know, how, how, how to train them. So you them want to be able to provide for them. Yeah, a how to give them a off. very holistic education. Concern, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. just, um, so there's an, an organization called Kinza Academy that focuses on, uh, it's really a, um, uh, a support group for a lot of homeschooling parents, but okay. also for parents in general just to, to produce high quality educational uh, material for children. Mm -hmm. And primarily, obviously, Muslim children, you know, like just to increase in uh, so that they have books and activities and things that uh, help kind of train them and, uh, and teach them the religion, but in a, in a manner that's um, sort of holistic and that's appropriate for our environment here in the U.S. and Canada and such. So we've been kind of focusing on that just to see that we, we also have that element because you'll see that in the Christian and Jewish community they have really high quality material and I think that's something that we in the West are kind of lacking. So right, and they focus on homeschooling quite a lot too. Well, yeah, I think they, they're, they're, their main premise for that also is to give them, uh, they want their children to, to, to be raised within the tradition, their mm -hmm. own tradition, but also to have... Um, and, you know, high level of ethics, manners, things like that, you know, and then an, an, a worldly education, you know, rooted in the, in, in the classical text, right? Mm -hmm. So same thing for the Muslims, I think it's important that we have that option for our youth, especially where, you know, education is, um, I mean, that should be, you know, the, the forefront of where we're at in our community, right? Spiritual education, exactly. religious education, and then you have your... The academics, you know, and then yeah, it goes, exactly. it's all hand in hand, rolled into one for yeah. that all around individual Correct. that you're hoping to develop, yeah. you know, not that young age because you've got three children yeah. of your own, and yeah. think to watch that in And they're on investment for, you know, f for this, uh, for the future to make things better, inshallah, so mm -hmm. it's uh, something you have to, you know, roll up What, what on. advice, now you've, you've been through quite a lot, I know you, you've experienced a quite a lot of, in society in terms of a female, a Muslim, Muslim female, um, professional level and community level, what advice would you give to our young people who are thinking of uh, trying to get involved in Islamic work? What advice would you give them if they're thinking of um, getting into the professional aspect, whether it's a medicine or something else? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, first and foremost, I think with everything, it, it, you have, they have to look back and see what their intention mm -hmm. is before they go into any, anything, whether it's their career or family life or um, Islamic work. What is your intention, right? It really should be about um, what it, you yourself and you're making making yourself a better person. It shouldn't be to please other people. It shouldn't be to, to do that. I mean, those are all secondary things. It, you know, so making sure that your intention is in the right place, that you're doing it to serve God and to to serve your community, right? Because well, the, the reason things. one of the reasons I'm asking that, I'm glad that you mentioned that intention is number one or should be number one, is that a lot of uh, young people are caught up in today. You know, the the fashion of being a professional. It may not be something that they internally, you know, really want to do, right. but because they're caught up in society, I need to be a doctor, I need to be an engineer, I need to be a lawyer, and these are the yeah. professions. They're not thinking of anything outside of that scope yeah. but it's good for them to realize what it is they want not society expects them Correct. to fulfill. and I mean I think it's a it's a lot to do to yourself if you're not yeah. happy in that profession because it's a long way to go so you exactly. really forget the status and everything right. else you have to do mm -hmm. it for um, is this really what your calling is and what you really f how you feel that you can live your life in the best manner right and then beyond that I would say that you know the mm -hmm. other thing is is that um, uh, you have to humble yourself because you know, whatever you've been given, you have to be grateful for. And you're going to be, you know, God has given you a lot of talents and gifts, and you have to be grateful for those things. And whatever opportunities comes forth to you, you should really maximize them and do the, the, the maximum benefit of good because our time here is limited. Right. So you really have to focus. Like, are you going to waste your time really worrying about 
um, other people and what they think of you? Or are you really just going to be true to yourself and be and and be uh, just generally a good person? Because that's really where where all of this is at is about mm -hmm. just invoking change, positive change, right? So that's what you want to do. So those are the things. You know, it's, it's just about humility because sometimes you can positions and status and, and status. you know and even in yeah. even in volunteer work like I'm in charge That's right. you know and I'm you the director you don't get paid in the status is it's there. not about that I mean you, you're here to serve yeah. and and the low, and and then also know when it's time to mm -hmm. move on when you're play when you're in a particular organization or anything you have to know that you're not there forever, forever. You and you have to pass the yeah. baton to somebody that you feel that will be best yeah. best suited because it's in the end it's about that service it's not about you you know, exactly. and recognition. So and a good leader knows right, that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And recognition yeah. comes from God. And so all the endorsements and marketing and everything, you see all those gimmicks out mm -hmm. there, really recognition comes from God. So you just leave that be, you know, and uh, and then just keep that in mind. And I think a lot of the hurt and, and, and pain that people feel sometimes in that work, that'll diminish, it'll go away. That's so. right. Some, some really great advice. You know, it certainly was a pleasure chatting with you no, today. Thank and thank you I'm for sure having me. Our viewers learned quite a lot, as I did, from your experience that you were willing to share with us today. Thank, thank you, you so it was, much. It for was being a blessing to be here. Thank you, Nima. May Allah bless you. you and continue to guide you, and you know, f make your Islamic work flourish. Inshallah. 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 Yeah. Thank you so much. And that brings us to the end of our program today. Please join us again next week for another edition of Who's Who in America and the Community, where you meet ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا إله إلا الله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر والله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا إله إلا الله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر والله أكبر